What's the crack, lads? Welcome back to another training guide. We are still on the eFootball Championship Volume 2 players, and now we are looking at Barella. So a lot of people have been asking me about him. Would I say he's the best player in this pack? I am tempted to say yes, and I probably will try a spin for him because I missed out on the Italian version of him. I do have him on my Xbox account, and he is a monster. I still rate Goretzka. I have done a training guide on Goretzka. I still rate Goretzka a little bit... Uh, I don't know. I, I won't say it better. It's just that I've played so many matches with Goretzka. He's come up for me big so, so many times that... It's just kind of like the Messi versus Ronaldo debate. You know, you have a favorite and then, you know, everything else comes after that. Stats, goals scored, all that sort of stuff, right? So it is a it is a case of Goretzka versus Barella, I think, in this pack are very similar players. You could train them up equally as good. Um, obviously, Barella is a smaller, shorter player, so he's going to be, you know, better on the ball. But Goretzka is a bit of an engine man as well. He gets up and down the pitch. So we are going to have two versions of Barella. They both are box-to-box -box players. They both go into the 95, 96 range when you train them up. And I do think that they are very similar players with how they handle, right? So before we get into anting, Barella is having a good season. So he's on B rating there. You can see he does have one touch pass, track back, interception and fighting spirit. So everything that you could possibly want. Would have liked to have maybe one or two dribbling stats as well to make him a bit more offensive. But I do think that this guy is an absolute monster, right? And I know a lot of people rave by him. I know a lot of you guys that watch the videos are always talking about Barella to get him into the squad. Uh, instead of Goretzka or instead of somebody like that. So we do have two different versions of him. As I said, I have trained with him and played with him quite a bit on my Xbox console um, and my Xbox account. So yeah, let's get into it, right? So the first thing that we're going to notice about him is when we're training him is that he goes to different levels now there has been multiple versions of this player most notably the italian pick right or the italian pack right 85 overall with 23 levels and then there was the inter milan pack 85 overall with 28 levels look familiar well that's because these cards are practically identical right so this one that released was a different type of player uh, pack but these three here are practically identical the inter the italian and this one now, the volume two, right? So I do think that at the 23 level mark, you're, you know, more in like, more in line with this Italian pack, but this Italian pack is a worse card, right? So I think that this is why people are probably looking at this Barella pack and thinking, Jesus, this guy is an absolute unit, right? Because this Italian pack, the only better stat or the only thing better that this Italian pack Barella has is plus one in ball control you can see it there it's 77 ball control but he's got three less aggression which does make a key change in this card and how we're going to trade him right especially in the second version of him the defensive version so this italian card if you had him you train him up and he's a monster this card has actually got better stats so the inter milan pack has got less aggression but more balance the italian pack has got less aggression but more ball control and then this guy has pretty much got everything sorted apart from having the ball control and the uh, the balance just a little bit worse right he's got three less balance than any of these cards um but they're very similar man they're very similar cards and very similar balance right so when we are training him up we've got two builds we've got an attacking offensive build similar to how we trained up enzo fernandez the last day uh if you guys were watching that video that i did and enzo is a monster i think Barella will be even better than him uh if you train him up like this because you've got the one touch pass you've also got interception to help out defensively and you've got fighting spirit so you don't need to use up uh, any more than you know 90 stamina or 92 stamina or speed you could actually even like change that a little bit and put it into uh, passing or dribbling if you want uh, but that is the offensive build of him there you've got eight into passing lower body strength and dribbling and then four into dexterity and defending and that's going to be your offensive build literally going from box to box bringing the ball forward tracking the ball back um, you're not going to be really too defensive but you're still going to be able to help out defensively right so i think that would be perfect if you're playing a three-man midfield like a dmf anchorman a box to box and then an amf you would be able to pivot there with the amf and interchange with the dmf very very easily next up we have the defensive build and yes your eyes are not deceiving you lads we have pumped up his defensive stats to the max right his core card right his base card is good enough in dribbling and aerial strength because he's a sharp player we're not going to need that too much right even on this card we haven't trained that but on this card i think it's even more uh you know prevalent that we don't actually train up anything but his defending his dexterity his passing and his lower body right 88 stamina is more than enough for this role that you're going to be playing him in 80 speed 81 acceleration we're still getting that speed to be able to zip around the midfield the midfield area is a, is a largely ignored area unless you have the ball and passing it through the, the lines 
So don't worry too much about speed and acceleration for your centre midfielders. But it's nice to have it as high as you can without kind of neglecting other key stats, right? So if you wanted to, you could genuinely take the dexterity down and pump it into passing. You know, if you wanted to do that, um, I would just have it there because you're going to be like a little bee buzzing around the place with Barella, trying to win as many balls, trying to just annoy your opponent as much as possible with blocking passing lanes, blocking passes off completely, and then, you know, roughing it up a little bit as well. But the big key for this card here is the defensive capabilities. You're going to go 98 aggression, 90 tackling, 92 defensive engagement. That's going to bring your defensive awareness up to 86. Now, look, you could get away, in my opinion, with probably um, having the aggression at that, and then you'd have a couple of more stats if you wanted to pump them into get the speed up a little bit more um if you wanted to do or the acceleration up a little bit more if you wanted to do that that's more than enough some people say that the defensive stats anything over 95 in any stat is overkill i disagree i think that when the ai is controlling the players especially with the way that the game has gone defensively now when you're coming up against top 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 players who literally do not sit on the ball for longer than a split second because they're playing super assisted one bar pass assist or level three pass assist and they're just zipping the ball around, you need your AI to be able to be tuned in defensively. And the higher defensive awareness is, that's going to, you know, kick in. So that's just something to keep in mind if you are getting destroyed online. So that is it, lads, for a defensive and an offensive build as we do here on the channel. Don't forget to subscribe if you're enjoying them. I'll be back quite soon with some more. Until next time, peace.